time, your gateway to the world. A-F-R. American Freedom Radio. Give it to them. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. Hello to the audience tonight. Uh, I lost my voice last week, so I wasn't able to do the show. I'm also 13 days off cigarettes, so I think that that's been affecting things in my voice as well. But uh, tonight we have Christy from Soul's Journey Radio, which is heard right here on American Freedom Radio. And I started to look at some of Christy's material and her YouTube channel and Christy, I really like your work. Thank you for coming on tonight. Ah, thank you so much. I'm super happy to be here tonight. So yeah, woohoo. Welcome back. I'm glad you're feeling better. And and that was Soul Journeys and uh your website is souljourneysradio.com, correct? That's right. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, I know there's some listeners that may already be listening to you, but I'm curious where your uh, your journey began and uh, and how you got involved in in doing shows on American Freedom Radio. And I think I've seen your name before in the past on some other websites. I don't know if you were with WTPRN at the time, but I think you've been around <laughs> a little bit. So, so uh, where does your story begin? Oh, my goodness. Um, this is a long one. This, this might uh, turn us into a four-month show, um, but I'll try to give the Cliff Notes version. I was brought up, you know, in just regular suburbia USA, like everyone else, uh, totally programmed by the Matrix. Um, I was taught to basically just do what I was told and, uh, you know, women are to be seen and not heard. Don't ask questions or, uh, you know, you will suffer the punishment. Um, you know, my dad was a uh, Navy um, SEAL and black ops and, you know, very kind of rigid household. And my mom, the typical, you know, complacent type, sit on the couch, eat your bonbons, take your drugs. Um, <laughs> so I uh, actually kind of had a, an interesting, um, I really feel like I've just been kind of falling into myself, I guess, in the last six years, um, because the 35 previous years, um, I guess, due to my programming and not knowing any better, I was always in and out of the hospital, starting from childhood all the way up till I was in a wheelchair, disabled and paralyzed from the waist down with my children feeding and clothing me, uh, bouts of cancer, uh, diabetes, lupus, and all the fun stuff that I got to... Uh, Oh, I guess in a nutshell, after um, so many years of being sick and realizing that all these doctors and all these drugs and everything I was doing uh, was not helping, I would have been safer uh, taking the street drugs and uh, just started looking for new ways and uh, learned to heal myself, got into uh you know, more gardening and wild foraging, juicing and things, healed myself and then became a holistic health coach and got a PhD in metaphysics and then just, uh, I don't know, I guess it's pretty much been my passion to let other people know that they don't have to go through the same things I did or if they are going through it, which is totally understandable that there is a gentle way out. So uh, I guess that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Well, you definitely have a lot of uh, common sense knowledge and information to share with the layman, and I appreciate that. One of our topics tonight uh, relates to uh, Project Love Your Neighbor, and I think this is uh, timely for myself, uh, being harassed and stalked uh, by a neighbor that thinks uh, the property around him beyond his property happens to be his, which is not, in fact, the truth. So maybe we can also talk about dealing with racist, unruly neighbors that just want us to leave a city that, in fact, doesn't belong to them. All, all different techniques that we may need to exercise, you know, as more and more listeners uh, seek to create their own independent communities, whether it be in the grid or outside the grid. And, Christy, that's why I'm out here, and I left Portland and I left Dallas, uh, because I realized, as you talked about in one of your videos, if we're going to be in poverty, we might as well learn to make it work for us instead of against us and do those things that in the past we, we never had the time to do. For example, um, I remember... Um, um, 
Uh, years ago when I was working at a restaurant, there was never enough time for what I really wanted to do, for relationships, travel. I mean, you name it. I never had the time, and yet I never made enough money um, to really do anything beyond pay my rent. So since I lost my job in 2009... I've been liberated in a lot of ways. So I know that you have a lot to, to, to share on this. Uh, but tell us about the project Love Your Neighbor. All right. Well, that's just something that kind of came about with, you know, basically based on lifestyle and seeking ways to better, you know, in a nutshell, I got tired of the bitching and whining and complaining. Okay. Um, like, oh my God, all our food is poisoned or, oh, this is too expensive or I hate state run daycare. Or, I hate supporting these corporations and all of these things that we hear, but I didn't really see people doing it. So I I, I just, you know, came up with this idea, which I really don't even want to say is my idea. You know, I, I definitely don't own it. I believe that this is the way that we have evolved as a species over who knows how many years, whether you want to, you know, say 5,000 or 5 billion. It's all the same to me. But I, I believe that that's what brought us here. I know people are kind of looking for ways and solutions. And so to me, it just felt like like a solution, something that anyone could do. Um, and you don't have to be part of a group. There's no master. There's no leader. There's no members. There's no rules. There's nobody telling anyone, you know, hi, I'm the boss and you have to do it my way. So I just figured if I planted these seeds that people can take it and run with it. You don't have to be on the Internet. It's just uh, simply a way of life. And I love what you're doing, Alex. I mean, being off the grid entirely is, you know, definitely a dream come true. Oh, not, not um, only that, I'm actually having to sit outside on the grass where there are fire ants. Oh. I can even stay in my car. There are about 100 birds circling above me. It's really unique. Uh, oh, well, it sounds it's pretty. <laughs> it, it, it's unique, yeah. The birds sound great. I hear them singing. But, yeah, so, I mean, I love what you're doing. It's total, like, dream come true. That's something I would like to evolve to. But, you know, unfortunately, we're in this uh, society where it's just not practical for everybody just to quit their jobs, quit, you know, quit everything they're doing and move out to the country like you're doing, right? So, right. And, and it happens sometimes different ways. For me, I was kind of forced out. I couldn't find anywhere to live in the city. So I decided if I was going to be homeless, I would go for rule, and I would, um, I would basically trust in God and ask the Creator to, to send me somewhere. So through synchronicity, He sent me someone that told me where to go. So awesome. it really happened. It, I know, and that's the message that I think we're bringing to the table here on programs uh -huh. like this, that even uh -huh. though we're waking up to um, certain realities about what they are trying to create for us, the Alex Jones worldview has reached many people, but I believe has also polluted many people's perception of how it's all going to play out uh, with the whole 80% uh, depopulation theory and yeah. attacks. And what I found, Christy, is that in the, in the seven or eight years since I got involved in the alternative media, I've never really dealt with full-on government harassment. What I've dealt with is my own uh, struggles to coexist in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and they have positive relationships that are based on true values. Um, um, sacred sexuality as opposed to all the stuff in society that that is kind of uh has immersed people uh healthy living healthy eating um and and getting off of the internet a lot more so so i've been learning those things just by being here internet withdrawal is kind of a huge thing yeah, definitely. Not everybody's ready for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's worse than crack for sure. But I love what you just said, Alex, that you really, you know, you didn't plan on doing it that way. But like, you know, you felt like you were forced out of where you were. And I've totally experienced that myself. And, you know, losing jobs. And I've actually done videos on this because I know, you know, in the society, we're like, oh, my gosh, we lost our minimum wage job. And, you know, we need to keep running to, you know, sitting in traffic to and from work each day just to pay for a roof over our head and, you know, still barely get by. And when we lose it, we feel so devastated. But in all actuality, isn't it just like one of the greatest blessings ever? Because you can trust the magic, you can trust God, and 
like how you said the perfect people came into your life and told you where to go and now you're just doing it and living this dream is just I don't know I, I just think that's and absolutely beautiful yeah, and a wonderful example and I'm thinking, how can we apply this to really big things, really big things? Um, when I went to the Free Your Mind conference in Philadelphia, the only reason that manifested is because a caller, uh, a listener here at American Freedom Radio, offered to purchase my ticket there if I can get on the, the speaking roster, which is exactly what happened a week later. And so um, now my goal is to, to just start building my own home. But, but how can we apply this, in your opinion, you know, the power of manifestation? Uh, towards reversing certain things. Because when I went to the Free Mind Conference, I talked with Curtis Davis and a few other people about this, and it seems that there's a, a large wake-up call to, to use this power, not for selfish personal means, you know, like material things, but for a selfless act for the greater good. There seems to be this quickening that we have this power. Yeah, it does seem like people are waking up definitely at a higher rate. And I don't even really want to use the term waking up because that implies that, you know, we have no more growth and we already know everything there is to do. So, you know, we're all in the process of waking up from the time we're born or I, I would really liken it to remembering our true selves and where we came from. So um, I think that in this process, I mean, one of the first things that happens is we get scared. You know, we're like, oh, my gosh, everything I thought I knew is a total lie. Where's my foundation? So you feel scared. You feel lost. Then you feel betrayed. You feel angry. And so what happens? Well, I'll tell you, at least in my experience, you know, I tried to get involved in politics because, of course, it was the only system I knew. And I'm like, well, we have to go change this. And so what do you do? That old saying, um, you become what you fight. I mean, it takes two to tango. So we end up spending our energy fighting these uh, you know, perceived enemies or whether it's, uh, you know, a, a three-lettered agency or four or five-letter or, you know, whoever it is. And I, I just found that that really wasn't the way. There was no change within this system. Um, so I kind of, you know, stepped out of it as much as I could, but not by fighting it or trying to change it, which I had spent years on before. I know you said that you haven't had... Um, too much uh, stalking or things like that from government agencies yeah. since you've been doing radio, but um, I have. <laughs> and uh, when I first started, it was in politics. In fact, I've been burnt literally live on the air while I'm on the radio and videotaping by uniformed police officers and, you know, another time arrested live on the air with my children kidnapped, you know, at gunpoint and everyone getting beat up and crazy stuff. So it was it was basically a series of mistakes or thinking that I could fight it to change it that led me to the outlook and perspective I have now where I just prefer to ignore it. Just to you know, focus on my life, what feeds my soul, what makes me happy, because then in turn, I am able to help other people. I am a better use in my house, in my garden, with my community, with my neighbors, with my friends, with my family, with, you know, with my, my profession. And, you know, so that kind of works for me. I, I just, I would like to caution people. I mean, I, I kind of learned the hard way is all of these I don't want to say all, and I don't even believe they were all designed this way purposefully, but what happens when you're, you know, tangoing in that system that is clearly controlled, well, they also provide the groups for you to lawfully protest them, right? So you're, you're really working with the people that you think you're fighting against. So Project Love Your Neighbor was like, Hello, ding, you know, the light comes on. If you really want to take the power out of the corporations and all these people that people, you know, complain about all day till, you know, they're blue in the face, stop spending your money there. If you really are pissed off at mainstream media and, you know, paying your $100 a month cable bill, stop 
paying it if you really, you know? So it was basically a solution-based idea that would get people to get to know their neighbors. And another thing that happens is after, like, the anger and the resentment and betrayal and, you know, trying to fix it type thing is that you feel like you have to do everything. Oh, well, I have to go off the grid. I have to have 100 acres so I can have horses, cows, goats, chickens, ducks, rabbits, and grow every single fruit, vegetable, and nut known to man, which <laughs> really is highly unlikely and, you know, kind of puts a lot of pressure on people. So Project Love Your Neighbor is about finding those couple things that you love to do, share it with your neighbors, and go to them first before you support the corporation. Definitely. Definitely. We'll talk more about that. Come back with our guest, Chris from Soul Journey Radio, right here on American Freedom Radio. Back after this. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilan Brown Seaweed Extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilan. There's nothing else like Modifilan. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamaria. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifiland banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coaching. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real in the heel. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. No rules. No rules. No taboo topics. No taboo topics. No fear of doom. No fear of doom. We are. We are. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. All right. Soul Journeys Radio right here on American Freedom, Freedom Radio is with us. And we're talking about Project Love Your Neighbor. And a lot of people have talked about skill shares, uh, going beyond a local currency and going straight to trading uh, uh, skill for skill. Uh, one person may know how to build something. One person may how to know how to put up a solar system, a solar um, panel system. Somebody might know about wind generators. Somebody may know how to make clothes. Someone may kn- may know how to make uh, really good pizza and really good food. So <laughs> in an independent community, we kind of need to have all of those bases covered. You know, you may need to have a spiritual uh, a guidance counselor. You know, perhaps someone that knows uh, how to mediate a conflict. In small communities, a lot of conflicts can arise. So, so Christy, I'm hoping that that maybe someone listening to this show or one of your future shows or my future shows may want to help us uh, make this website a reality, uh, something like Craigslist where people can go and they can click on their city and then go into certain subsections where they have their skills laid out. Uh, because I think that, um, well, I was saying to you during the break, you know, maybe something like this already exists, but I haven't heard of it. So there needs to be something. If there's someone that knows how to make websites, this would be a great contribution to a solution. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, anybody um, who is web savvy and knows how to do that, um, you know, I I purchased the domains like a year ago. (laughs) So they're ready to go. I just, I don't know how to do it. Um, And that's okay because, honestly, it's less about the website than it is about the idea because this is something that anyone can do. You know, just how many people actually know their neighbors? Uh, you know, any more? I'm thinking not many. And so we can get to know them and go introduce ourselves. Hi, my name's Christy. Uh, I have a fabulous garden. I make medicinal teas and lotions and creams. I'm a health coach. I can babysit. Uh, you know, before you go to Walmart to pick up your cupcakes on the way to your office <laughs> meeting, perhaps you can purchase them from me. You know, order order your office cupcakes or donuts here, right, instead of picking them up at some corporation on your way to work, um, you know, or 
you might find out that your neighbor fixes computers or they're electricians or they're plumbers or they're mechanics or they can watch your children so you don't have to, uh, you know, send them to state-run daycare or maybe some of them are educators or whatever it is. So that's what it's about, kind of bringing things back locally. And, you know, many of us, um, you know, myself and yourself included, Alex, and, and a lot of us are doing straight barter. But, again, I realize that doesn't work for everyone with everything at this particular time. So, you know, hey, if if you're having one of those cushy jobs where you need to pick up those muffins on the way to your office meeting every day, you you know, maybe you have the money to trade me cash, right? Because right now, most of us do need cash to pay for our water or electricity or gas in our vehicles. I, I haven't figured out how to barter that yet. Um, <laughs> but I do believe that times are changing and it is going to come. You know, you mentioned solar panels and there's lots of people doing that and rewiring their cars. And I really think that that is where society is headed. And I think Project Love Your Neighbor is kind of a good way to just reconnect with the community and take the economy back local. You know, I was doing some research on, I'll just use Walmart, for example. They bring in something like $40 million an hour. Oh my God, could you imagine if we were just able to shave off 1% of that by keeping it local? Or what if we even got 10% of that? People like you and me and the listeners of the show that are getting to know their neighbors and one of them's making their baby booties and the other one, you know, or, the cloth diapers and the other one, the milk and the other one, the, your salad greens or whatever it is. I mean, how beautiful would that be? Or, or what if Walmart, by law, this may be controversial to some people, but it's my opinion at the moment. What if Walmart, in order to be able to operate in a certain jurisdiction, had to give uh, 1% of its sales or, or 0.5% uh, of, the, uh, of, the, um, uh, of, of whatever they're grossing towards a local community co-op. Because oh, wow. we have something called Access TV, which, which you may have heard of, and, and yeah. Alex Jones heard on that. And there's a lot of great Freeman Fly, my friend, used to do a show on Access, and I miss my Access show. That's provided for because of the cable monopolies. They have to pay the local cities that much just to operate their monopoly on the fiber optic cables. Uh, and they started Access TV in the 1970s. So maybe that type of model could be implemented. Um, so in dealing with Walmart, there's so many things that, that need to be done. But uh, it's, it's um, I was saying, Christy, to a few people, the biggest advertiser for Walmart is people through word of mouth saying, I got it cheaper at Walmart. Oh, and wow. Even, <laughs> even though this is a really beautiful area where I'm at here in the San Luis Valley near the San Juan Mountains, Walmart is the main supplier for basic outdoor off-the-grid stuff, whether it's tiki torches or whether it's a propane stove. And the propane stove I bought from Walmart broke on me. Now I have to get Aww. another one. Oh, so, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's things like that. But, yeah, I really hope someone listening wants to, uh, to help Christy out because I'd like to see uh, this project move forward. Has anybody contacted you yet? Um, a few people have, and then just things kind of, I don't know, I don't hear from them after a while. But, I mean, things are growing. We have, like, over 800 on the Facebook group, and two chapters have already started, one in Alaska, one in Missouri, and they're doing local things. Like, uh, I was talking to you on the break, uh, the free school. Uh, we started here, in, or my friend started April 1st here in Southwest uh, Missouri, um, which is just a conglomeration of people like us. Uh, some of us has sk have skills that we'd like to share, and some of us there have skills that we would like to learn. So it's all volunteer-based and lots of bartering, farmer's markets, things like that. We get to learn things about, uh, you know, natural medicine or, say, fermenting, cooking, essential oils, herbs, language classes, crochet classes, sewing classes, raising chickens, survival classes, uh, you know, all sorts of really beautiful things. So it's kind of coming together. Um, you know, so I'm just thinking if it's something that we live, if it's something that we do, if it's something we talk about, 
that's more important than, you know, a website ultimately. However, a website would be a wonderful way to share it. <laughs> Well, I have a very positive feeling that someone's going to hear this, that needs to hear this, that has the skills, and uh, they may want to help out. Now, uh, we will take phone calls tonight. We have Christy for another hour and a half, and the number is 218-339-8525. That's 218-339-8525. And, Christy, one of the other reasons I came here is to get more practical experience dealing with people. Uh, whether they're aware of certain truths or not, uh, just for the uh, the practical hands-on experience. And I've lived in a lot of urban environments where neighbors throughout this vibe, almost this uh, porcupine aura, <laughs> you know, don't talk to me or you're going to get spiked. And yeah. it's very uncomfortable. Even if there are people here that don't like each other, uh, because we're low in numbers, we know who each other is. Uh, we know we're... we're um, you know, certain resources are. We work with other people to go get water. So even though I'm in a really lightly populated area, um, I will go ahead and say I know about 20 neighbors, which is a record for me. So yeah. record low number in terms of residents, record high number of people actually knowing each other. And so it's um, it's it's experience, though, um, yeah. coming That's to people beautiful. level that that. And not, not getting too deep with them about certain issues. Yeah. You know? Good that's point. That's not easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> but, you know, it's, again, we're all on our path. And I was talking with one of my friends today. Like, he couldn't understand why people didn't want to listen to his advice and healing. And it's like, look, you can say the exact same thing twice at two different times in someone's life. If they're not ready to hear it, you know, it's going to sound like nagging or an attack or something. So, you know, I've really had to learn, you know, maybe my parents are right. Don't speak until spoken to, you know, don't offer advice unless people want it. And it's kind of, you know, I have to remember where I was when I was in a wheelchair and, you know, going to all the doctors and taking all their stupid drugs and everything they told me to do. You know, if somebody would have told me that my, my health was my responsibility, I probably would have punched him in the face. You know, like, oh, how heartless. How dare you say that? Don't you know? I'm special. I have all these diseases that I'm going to hold on to and make them part of my identity for the rest of my life so I can feel sorry for myself and be dependent and have people like you feel sorry for me forever, you know? And I know that sounds kind of in your face saying it that way, but really the truth is our health, our life is our responsibility and unfortunately things aren't going to change the world to where we want to see it until we change ourselves as long as people keep looking for a master a leader a doctor a poet whoever outside themselves there is no self-empowerment there is none so i don't know i i really what appreciate thoughts on what you're issue? doing mm-hmm well, thank, thank you, and I appreciate your work, and I want to get some of your opinions on a few things because I like your opinions. What do you think about shooting for uh, and pushing for people to create their own colonies of liberty? Because, you know, I support Ron Paul like a lot of people. There's a lot of things that happened in the campaign that made me a little bit concerned as to how it was run. You know, and if Ron Paul was very, all, was very capable, how could he let Jesse Benton? get away with things that he did that were yeah. really disruptive to the campaign. So I'm thinking as the Ron Paul campaign was going on, I was talking to liberty-minded people saying, what are you going to do in the post-2012 world other than talk about revolution and guns in the street? I mean, how far can we push our creativity here? Is it really down to that? If Ron Paul doesn't win, we got to have a revolution. And how <laughs> revolution? Has there been a revolution as of lately? You know, I'm looking at my watch and I'm not seeing it. So yeah. I'm thinking... If people are really scared about a bio-death weapon that's going to take out 80% of the population, you would think that that would motivate people enough to go, well, we've got to use Facebook while we've got it. We've got to use <laughs> YouTube while we've got it to find the others that can see and create our own, not cults, but, but cities. I really am thinking big here. Yeah, I think definitely. that there's enough of us that we can have our own um, metropolitan areas. That's far bigger than anything like the Free State Project. And I think that, uh, well, at least that's where my fantasies go, you know, because soul's journey, I, I've, I've now come to the point where I don't care what happens to the body. It's all yeah, a matter of where the exactly. soul goes. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, and, I totally agree. Right. I, I think that, I mean, people are kind of doing things like that. Like you mentioned, Free State Project. I do remember um, I was supporting Granny. Uh, Lindy, Linda Honeycutt, Granny Warriors, and Michael Badnerick, they were going to Texas and setting up a city, and he was going to be, you know, run for sheriff and things like that. I totally support doing things like that. However, for me, I would like to be without structure, <laughs> kind of. Um, I, I don't... I would like to not ever have to deal with a city council or a mayor or a police chief or a sheriff or a, a, a governor or <laughs> any of that again. I, I guess I'm kind of anarchist in my tendencies where I just think that we should work together. As you mentioned, one person makes the clothes, one person does the building or obviously more than one, but you know, we all have skills, and I know many of us think that, oh, well, we need government to build the roads for us or to make the buildings for us or to make those beautiful monuments for us or to protect the parks for us. But what? I think they've protected, what, over 70 percent of the entire land mass in the United States, meaning that we can't touch it. I mean, we can go to a few select places after paying a $30 ticket to walk in and go look at a pretty rock like Mount Rushmore or something, but is that really protecting it? I would like to see something a little more pure where people lived in harmony for each other, where it wasn't, well, this is, this is, you know, no borders at all. You know, no county lines, no <laughs> anything. We where we're actually free to travel anywhere, not um, with permission of having a license and paying your road taxes and paying your astronomical gas taxes. So there are a few uh, commune type places, I guess, in Missouri and even Texas, which I think are absolutely beautiful. I l totally support what they're doing. They're living off the land. Uh, some of them like trade winds. They make their own products that they sell in stores, uh, you know, nut butters, dried fruits, vegetables, et cetera. And that's how they make it. So they can pay the man for their land. But wouldn't it be cool if we could just kind of pick a spot of land and say, I want to live here? <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of an idealist. To the point where we don't need a state, like you said, government, because, you know, there, there are some of us, some of us, that are evolving uh, beyond this perception that we need to continue to pay tribute to the modern king. And, and that's exactly what it is. It's, it's the, you People know, the, freak out when I say things like this, you know, like, oh, my gosh, anarchy. Well, what's going to happen? And everybody's going to be crazy and everybody's going to go start murdering and raping people. And it's like, OK, wait a minute. Do you need a law to tell you not to go steal from your neighbor or not to rape his wife or not to, you know, I don't think so, number one. Number two, who's doing all the murdering in this world? <laughs> it's and, it and also, a little you know, people enough, in the neighborhood. Enough, <laughs> right, ex exactly. And there's enough good men that would uh, protect them. That type of thing. Uh, uh, to evolve beyond that as well. And we'll be back with Christy from Soul Journeys Radio, right here on American Freedom Radio. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilan, brown seaweed extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilan. There's nothing else like Modifilan. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifilan banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. Yo, what's up? Check this out. The voice of the revolution. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. All right. Ah. 
numbers to join the conversation and ask Christy a question about health, wellness, and there's so many topics we can continue to get into tonight. The number is 218-339-8525. And, and Christy, I just want to say, you know, I'm glad you're out there and that, you know, I remember looking at the alternative media six years ago, seven years ago, at the, the names, uh, you know, the pictures on some of these websites and RBN and Genesis and going, you know, there needs to be more females. You know, <laughs> there needs to be more, yeah. it, it, less of a male dominated uh, because we need more perspectives from the feminine, uh, especially when it comes to health. Not just uh, physical health, but emotional health. I think that there's a lot of souls that are on this planet right now and the soul's journey we've got going on that are specifically on this planet to learn about emotions, uh, to learn about cause and effect, to, to have empathy. Where are your thoughts on that? Because I'm convinced that there are some very old souls amongst us. Some of us have memories of other battles, invasions, places, and time. So we understand this new world order stuff on a pretty intimate level. And then there's some other people that seem like they just got here. <laughs> you know, they're still <laughs> sniffing butts. You know, they're still scratching. You know, they, they, they seem like they're still, they're new to being in human form. And I just find that to be fascinating. Yeah. I, I, what you said about emotions and healing are of utmost importance because whatever we manifest physically has already happened energetically. So, you know, and as far as dis-ease is concerned, disease, it's you need to find what you're not at ease with. So if, for example, if you have, you know, maybe you're suffering a hardened heart, or you've had your heart broken a few times, and, you know, maybe even a little bit of abuse and trauma in there, and you don't want to, uh, you know, you're afraid to express yourself or love or for some reason feel you don't deserve love from others, well, that kind of manifests in heart problems. Problems, you know, whereas uh, grief and such will be concentrated in the lungs and show up in, you know, uh, as asthma or COPD or emphysema and such. So, yeah, I definitely agree. Everything starts on an emotional level, and that's how I work as a holistic health coach. It's not, you know, some people think that natural medicine is, oh, well, I did this thing and just prescribe me an herb or, you know, give me an herb to use. And, and that's, you know, eerily similar to what we're trying to get away from. So I try to incorporate all of that, physical, spiritual, emotional, and mental, into one. And you find out what the root is. Why are we having these problems? Nip it in the bud there and incorporate it and, you know, pamper yourself in baby steps so it becomes a lifestyle. It's not like a drastic change. Um, because herbs can be like drugs, too, and people get addicted to herbs as well. So, um, yeah. And, and you asked me another question after that. I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time remembering that. But in relation to remembering, oh, yeah, remembering timelines, and I definitely believe that. Um, a lot of us uh, have uh, have lived pretty much the same thing over and over what we're doing right now um <laughs> so i think in in reference to what you said about uh it seems like some people just got here that's okay because there was a time where i think we were too i mean if you would have talked to me 15 years ago about any of this stuff my eyes would have glazed over i'd have been like dude you know because i was programmed hello i knew what was going on in the world i watched fox news and nbc and cnn you know <laughs> so I, I definitely would have been one of those people that look at me funny today you know what are you talking about if there was really poison in the food the fda wouldn't approve it or if these chemicals really hurt us they wouldn't put it in the water that's what they're there here to protect us come on you crazy person so i just think we need to be gentle with them and love them as we needed to be loved exactly where we were and our growth, um, because again, we're still growing. There really, there really isn't a race, in my opinion. It's not like, uh, you know, maybe some of us are in kindergarten, some of us are in first grade, some of us might be, you know, in, in junior high. But um, I don't think there's really any truly, I mean, completely awake or evolved, uh, you know, person walking on the planet or they wouldn't really have to be here anymore. 
So, well, I mean, that's just my perspective. <laughs> and, and I was thinking, um, as I was making a YouTube video, there's a lot of people out there that seem very enlightened amongst us. But when you really get to know some of these people, you find it's quite the opposite because none of us are perfect, even though there seems to be this hidden standard that we reach some sort of perfection. You know, just, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah. But I'm starting <laughs> to realize that some of us have issues just to deal with um, just relating to mutual respect and, and, and learning to love and appreciate the talents of others. I mean, once we can get beyond, oh, we're under attack, ah, they're, they're Kim drilling yeah. us. You know, once we get beyond that... Then, you know, because ultimately, if you put all of us uh, independent thinkers together in a single room, it could end up as a riot. <laughs> you know, so we have to start <laughs> testing good. our abilities to get together in big rooms and yeah. continue having conferences and sharing information. You know, yeah, like because even there, everybody thinks, well, this is the one right way, and I know everything now, and all the rest of you are beneath me. But it's so silly. I think we have to kind of detach, detach from our beliefs. Uh, what we think we know, and even challenge it as often as you can. Don't just accept other people's words. And guess what? If there's things that you can't explain, it is totally okay. I just don't, um, you know, I have a hard time with people that think that they can explain everything, you know, interplanetary. And, you know, I know exactly what's happening on this planet and this, you know, it's like, really? Or like people who fight about what Jesus supposedly said 2,000 years ago. It's like, really? I mean, can't we all get along? It's like, can't you believe that Jesus was whatever you want to believe, and your friend can believe that Jesus never existed, and your other friend could be, you know, of some other religion or whatever. I mean, can't we still play in the sandbox together and have differing opinions? <laughs> I don't know. We, we really have, we have come a long way, but I think we have a long ways to go. But again, I think it boils back to our programming and fear, and ultimately, fear of death self-hate and guilt because if you love yourself you are not going to willingly hand yourself over to slavery you're just not you <laughs> so pretty much everything kind of boils down to that and you know you mentioned chemtrails and that kind of reminded me i think like a week ago i uh tweeted a video or something um i uh, know it was a garden video that i did on youtube and i got all these messages like Oh well, you know, I hope it grow I hope it comes out okay. Good luck with that, but with all the chemtrails and acid rain, you're never going to be able to grow anything. You know, it's going to be poisoned if you do. And I'm just like laughing. I'm like, "Really? Okay, first of all, I've been growing, you know, a lot of my own food for 6 or 7 years. In that time, I completely healed myself from these incurable so-called incurable diseases by the establishment. So, if we weren't able to grow anything but poison because what they are allegedly doing, then, I mean, I don't know, it's working for me. So I just, it was really interesting to see that the fear had paralyzed them so much that they are afraid to grow their own food. Right. And so then what happens? They go back and support the same corporations that they're going to go scream and yell about on the streets like Monsanto or whoever else. It's like, come on, the solution is simple. You don't have to buy their stuff, period. Okay, if even if we have chemtrails every day and acid rain every day, I guarantee what I produce in my garden is a thousand times better than what you can get in the store. Number one, number two, I did it myself and I'm not supporting these people that are hurting other people. Right. So <laughs> I don't know. It's just we have to get beyond that. Well, and, yeah, you've Go never on. had a migraine until someone tells you that the chemtrails are killing them as they cough and they rasp on their 10th cigarette that hour. <laughs> I mean, when you see that, then you've really hit the headache. I mean, you know, 10 out of 10. But yeah, the, the victim consciousness, I'm working really hard, Christy, on the show to, to uh, um, counter that. And I used to cover a lot of surveillance society, Big Brother, you know, a Gen 21, 9-11 news. You know, and my perception started to, uh, you know, really branch out even farther uh, in 2008. 
2009-2010. And one of the things that I talk about on this show is the victim consciousness, the things that people have, uh, the energy people have sent me over the years um, and experiences I've had as a result of just simply speaking the truth. And even though there is government harassment, and I would even say alien harassment, um, yeah. psychic attacks, um, and all that's very serious. The biggest issue for me was dealing with that victim consciousness. Um, maybe, you know, you're on a date with someone and they're like, well, if I get involved with you, I'm going to be on the list. You know, maybe something <laughs> like that. And yeah. that gets really internalized, Christy, over the years yeah. and that happens over and over and over again. Um, yeah. Or when people are attacked in their dreams because they're associated with you. Uh, yeah. Or other victim consciousness, uh, things like, oh, well, if I grow my own food, they're going to come after me because they read an article about it happening somewhere where they use a drone. And, yeah. and I'm thinking to myself, maybe they're pushing these articles and allowing them to be out there about the drone attacking the farm so they can um, frighten everyone else. Yeah. There was a story in Oregon about a person put in jail for uh, a large uh, rainwater containment uh, area he made. He dug a large yeah. reservoir. And in Oregon, as you know, it rains a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a ridiculous story. But that story got picked up nationwide, and everybody started to pair it on Facebook. If I do this, they're going to come after me. And I just yeah. I, I beg the question. Or maybe front yard gardens. Exa I totally agree. Very good point, Alex. Well, let's get some uh, phone calls in this second hour. We've got one more hour with Christy, and uh, that number is 218-339-8525. And we'll be back in three minutes. Stay with us. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilant Brown Seaweed Extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilant. There's nothing else like Modifilant. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifiland banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coaching. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. No rules. No rules. No taboo topics. No taboo topics. No fear of doom. No fear of doom. We are. We are. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. Okay, now we are at hour two of Outside the Box. By the way, we're here once a week. And Saturday nights, that's the night, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. That's uh, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock Pacific Time or 9 to 11 if you live on the East Coast. Christy, you were talking about, you know, loving ourselves for who we are. And um, you made a video about nakedness. And I was thinking, actually, my neighbor, I was sharing the video with him. Uh, because he enjoys a lot of the alternative media stuff I'm, I'm exposing him to. He can't get enough. And he was saying, you know, if we were meant to be ashamed of our bodies, God would have made us with foreskin around our whole naked body. So we could just crawl <laughs> out of it. Hey, well, we were just circumcised it. Just plant that weird <laughs> image of foreskin around our whole body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, doctors would just uh, 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 circumcise it. So... <laughs> Oh, it's so crazy, the shame and humiliation and everything regarding the human body. I mean, I, I happen to believe that we were all born perfect, exactly the way we were supposed to. I mean, we don't, you know, look at nature. We're not going out and grabbing flowers and, you know, circumcising them or telling them to wear bras or making them, you know, we're the only species that puts on clothes that hides ourselves. And, you know, the shame is, is definitely very real. I'm embarrassed. I mean, I wore a dress today to go out and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, is, you know, is that too much skin showing? 
asking and you know <laughs> he's like why are you asking me this and I'm like well you know it's I'd like to feel more comfortable being a little more open and free but we are in a society where you know I've been bra free for uh, quite some time and um, it's kind of it's it's a huge step to take but I did it for health um, of course some of the side effects of that were were not only health but even cosmetic um, so yay for that that's another show of course I have done okay, video now, I, did, I didn't that. watch the video on on going braless sorry to interrupt but mm -hmm. what psychological effects could there be to wearing a bra too much uh, maybe uh, uh, subservient oh. energy or, or things of that nature when you're all strapped up and and kind of in a harness exactly sort of okay. yeah imagine putting a corset on your whole life are you gonna be a little uptight yeah I think so not only that it blocks the lymphatic flow which is essentially the sewer system of the human body so that's why we have I mean there's a direct Direct correlation to bras and breast cancer for example in countries or in cultures where there are no bras where women don't wear bras there's the same incident of breast cancer as there is for men which is like less than 1% they've done study Harvard has done studies China has done studies um, uh, what was the one in South America? I think Venezuela. And then the French one that was just completed. Um, you know, there's a direct correlation. So when you're, you're squeezing that lymph, all of that waste is getting stuck where? Well, in your breasts and in your armpits. But it doesn't stop there. So, you know, you can pull an Angelina Jolie and allegedly chop your boobs off. That is not going to protect you from any type of cancer, including breast cancer, because that's what a lymphs are. But, you know, it doesn't end at just bras. It's anything that is constricting, anything that leaves red marks on your body. So socks, uh, belts, jeans, elastic, hats even, um, you know, underwear, even boxers, guys. So, you know, basically if something is leaving a red mark on your skin, it is blocking your flow. When it's blocking your flow physically, internally, what do you think is happening energetically, mentally as well? So I really, I, I saw a direct correlation with going bra free and being able to, you know, kind of wake up, so to speak, and see the world from new eyes. I feel so much freer. I, by the way, if anybody is interested in this, I just want to say I have no more breast pain, no breast tenderness, no PMS, no cramps. My boobs have actually lifted. Since I've gone bra free, they're more round. They're no longer hanging out in my armpits when I'm laying on my back. They're actually up on their chest where they used to be. And my stretch marks are gone. Oh, and I had a, um, uh, I had a cyst when I started this on my left breast, which is also gone. So it's, you know, health reasons is why I did it. However, there are many other cosmetic reasons, emotional, mental, and spiritual reasons as well. So if you are interested in learning more about that, I have made uh, tons of videos, but Sidney Ross Singer, he is like the greatest. He's been promoting this for a couple decades, at least after the Fiji study where, you know, he went there with his wife and the women were like, what's this? What are you wearing? And, you know, so that was kind of their path into discovering and opening the Institute, for, uh, the Self-Study Center, the Institute for Culturogenic Disease in Hawaii. And he sets up self-studies with women all over doing this. And um, anyways, he wrote a book called Dress to Kill, which will tell you all about it and all the other diseases that it's associated with. Um, but yeah, you asked me, you know, how do I feel going uh, bra free? Just absolutely tremendous. And it gets me, you know, looking back on how uptight and kind of stiff, you know, I used to be to now I just... I feel more natural. Granted, sometimes some old ladies, you know, I live in the Bible Belt, so <laughs> sometimes I do get a couple looks, but, you know, not from men, nothing like right. perverted. Nobody points their finger and says, ew, mommy, she's not wearing it. But like, nobody cares. Nobody cares at all. So that's more programming we have to get over. And I've just really been looking at how we've been taught to hate ourselves. 
to despise ourselves. Oh, we're all You're supposed right. to look like a 20-year-old, you know, Barbie doll centerfold on Playboy or something with Photoshop included, you know, right from the time you wake up and airbrushing. And, you know, so I've actually, I'm going to do a project here in the winter um, about shaving my armpits. <laughs> Again, it's just part of me questioning all these beliefs and where it came from. I've been looking into how we have been shamed. Oh, this is, you know, you have to do this to look like a beautiful woman. And then, you know, they end up selling us a bunch of products and making us hate our natural state. So I've decided I want to know what's up with, you know, why do we shave our armpits? I'm sure God probably put it there for a reason. And I'm going to find out what that reason is. So actually, one of my friends, who's a guy, um, who, of course, wants me to shave. And, you know, I, I shave my armpits. I, I just do. But again, I, I love testing myself and trying out new things. He decided that um, he's going to shave his armpits for 60 days and I'm not. And we're going to do little videos and talk about our experiences. And maybe we will find out, uh, you know, maybe I'll have some kind of epiphany about why the hair is there. And who knows? You know, I might go back to shaving. I might not. I don't know. But, yeah, it's all just part of, you know, questioning this existence and why we do what we do. I don't know. Most of the things we do, it's because our parents told us to. Period. <laughs> right. One time I shaved my head. It, I think the year was 2000. I was just curious how that would turn out. Uh, it started with a really bad haircut, and I just thought I would just shave it all off and see how it would rebound. But um, what you're saying applies to men very yeah. much so. Um, I, I was born with, you know, a naturally hairy body due to my father's genetics. Aww. And I've always been shunned for it, even by other men. And Aww. I always thought it was really bizarre. Yeah, women, I don't think they really understand. I, I know you do. What it's like on the other side, people just think it happens to women, but deep psychological problems can come about from someone hating themselves for their own genetics. Definitely. And I, I grew up in a world where a lot of that was thrown my direction. Even, you know, my mother uh, didn't like people from over there because things didn't work out very well with her and my father. And I, I've gone down and written things down in a deprogramming process. Uh, in a attempt to, to really just clean out all the dirt because I'm realizing how much is there from just living in this world in this modern age. And I think that men have as much or maybe even more so, more work to do um, along those lines of self-love, of however the creator and their parents, which were made by the creator, made them. Um, and, and to really understand what is racism, when we criticize how other people's manifestations uh, of their body turns about and we yeah. make judgments upon it, we may unknowingly uh, be responding to some sort of primal racist gene of groups okay. combating over women, over territory, over popularity. And I just sometimes feel that subtle en energy in today's world, even wow. though we're supposedly much more enlightened and whatnot. I still see the Viking energy all over, you know, yeah. running around, the barbarian I've stuff. Seen it. <laughs> yeah, with you totally. <laughs> but yeah, I've seen what you're saying. Like with men, you get criticized if you have too much hair. You get criticized if you don't have enough hair. Women get criticized if their hair is not just so. And you know, you have to shave it here, but not there. And you better do it there, but not here. It's like who makes these rules and why? I mean, why are we again the only living creature that feels that we have to modify our natural innate perfection? I don't understand. Well, let me get your let me get your take on this because I think you're going to have some very interesting things to share with all of us. I happen to believe that there is no collective shift in consciousness until this is just my opinion, but it's been a strong one for the last five or six years, and my own personal experience has kind of fed into this. Um, until men and women are more at balance with each other, and that includes seeing each other as brothers and sisters and being able to communicate in a non-sexual way, but also to be able to communicate in a sexual way, yeah, without being weird with with it being healthy and great. Um, until we reach that point, there is no collective shift in consciousness. We will continue to go on the downward spiral and the regression of the human species and the family structure until that love comes back. And uh, I think that as men and women, we have unique challenges that we've got to face. For a man, it's to see beyond a woman's breast and beyond the size of her butt and beyond the primitive, is, she, is it going to be a good procreative experience for me? And for a woman, it's got to go beyond he has to have money and go and be six foot tall and be yes. a knight in shining armor. I think there are biological things that 
are in us. Who knows how they got in us, whether it's just our own genetics or whether some extraterrestrial tampering has contributed to some sort of, uh, you know, warped desire within the human body. What are your thoughts on the responsibilities that men and women uniquely may have to look at in order to become more conscious uh, when it comes to how we see ourselves and, and just relationships as a whole um, going beyond using each other um, and, you know, for physical purposes and, and, and really experiencing true love? Because I believe these are, for a lot of people, there are exceptions, the most unromantic times in history because mm -hmm. of the energetics taking place and the shifting. So what are your thoughts on all that? Oh, wow. Very good questions and very good points. And um, I'm totally with you, Alex. I, I do believe, again, it boils down to self-love. For example, uh, you bring up like the... The woman who gives women a bad name, who just, oh, you have to have this perfect car, you have to make X amount of dollars or whatever. Um, a lot of times in those dynamics, you know, the guy also has some healing to do. He's thinking, oh, well, she's hot. You know, I want my little trophy wife and I'm working all the time anyways. So I want my eye candy the two hours I'm, you know, able to spend at home. It's, you know, these relationships, I'm sure you've all seen them. They're not very happy. I mean, they might look like it on the surface. Yeah, they might have the big house. They might have the fancy clothes. They might have the boob jobs and the makeup. And, you know, they might be on the front page of your paper or whatever. They might be socialites. But, you know, behind the scenes, there is not a lot of self-love or nurturing going on. I think we both put a lot of pressure on not our own sex and the opposite sex, for example, you brought up healing earlier and emotions and, you know, yeah, we're told, oh, well, men have no emotions and they don't cry and, oh, they're such jerks. But, you know, hello, moms, women, how many times did you tell your son not to cry? Is he being a baby? Is he being a sissy? Is he being, is he being gay? Is he being, you know, what is it? Oh, come on, tough it up. And, you know, so these things are ingrained in us as a child. So I think we can start nurturing that within each other. For example, um, you know, there's a lot of us uh, uh, men and women who are afraid to express their emotions at all including anger, you know, because we're taught that, oh, you're not allowed to be angry or maybe we got punished one too many times as a child. But we have to make, we have to love ourselves and our partners enough to accept, you know, things happen. Emotions happen. They're just temporary. You know, we can't, women, we can't nag our men. Oh, come on, talk, open up, tell me right now, you know, how you're feeling. Understand that we're different. We just are. But when the male feels more comfortable expressing emotion, you know, then you have to be able to allow that. You can't like put rules. Well, tell me this emotion, your lovey dovey stuff and cry your heart out to me. But, oh, don't you get mad? Oh, if he gets mad, then, you know, that's violent. And, you know, he's going to beat me or, you know, I, whatever, all these weird dynamics that are going on in people's relationships. So I think, number one, we need to nurture each other. But we have to be able to do it within ourselves first, because then, you know, when it's genuine or not. If you're dating a plastic tomato or marrying a provider just because he has a good car or a good job, you're, you know, I just thought of uh, Louis, my friend. He, he wrote a blog, Louis B. He, he suggested that all women can be bought. And my response to him was, if you, if, if you're into buying women, the only type of women you can get are women that can be bought. OK, so, you know, can you be bought? What's your price, men or women? Can you sell your soul for a paycheck? If so, exactly. good for you. I, I have That's to not what I want. I've referred to men that go out as mercenaries and kill others that did nothing to this country as prostitutes. Yeah. Totally. So yeah. They're, they're, just, they're hired hit men. I'm sorry, military. I love you. I don't blame you. I understand. But, yeah, you're hired hit men.
okay? And, <laughs> you know, we're doing the same things. Hello, Stepford Wives. Come on. It's time to wake up and break through that. You are more than your body. You're more than your boobs. You're more than your ash. You're more than your, you know, the size of your house. There is so much more to all of us. And I just hope that I really feel that we're in a time where people are starting to discover that. And it might get a little messy and it might get a little yucky and it might be a little scary. Like, oh, my gosh, what does being a full spectrum human being mean? I don't know what that is. This is so foreign. I just want to go back to my box and eat my bonbons and drink my Bud Light. <laughs> oh, that sounds like life out here. <laughs> or life in a lot of places. Uh, all right. For those listening, we want to get some phone calls and some, uh, some other opinions, some other thoughts, some other feelings some other human expressions 218-339-8525 Christy from Soul Journeys Radio is with us for two more segments it's time to get real and heal MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilant Brown Seaweed Extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilant. There's nothing else like Modifilant. It is the richest in alginate, Fucoidin, organic iodine, and Lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Fucoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifiland banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coaching. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. Welcome to the world's meeting place. American. It's practically narcotic. Freedom. Oh, yes. I like very much. Radio. They're an American institution. American Freedom Radio. Go ahead and type into Google, hey, Joe, what do you think of the state of the world? And you see me walking up on a Dallas cop, and I'm just like, hey, Joe, what's up? What do you think of, what do you think of the state of the world? And he just looked at me like I just arrived from a, an alien planet. But it's pretty <laughs> fun stuff. I try to make funny videos every now and then, not just serious videos, and, and videos about off the grid and videos about my, my perceptions of how the sun is affecting consciousness, though. So for all those that are new listeners, don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Alex Answer. you got seven years of just my own growth, in a way, being documented uh, since 2004 and five, And then, of course, you have Christie's um, YouTube channel, which, uh, could you spell that out for us? Uh, on YouTube, it's Soul yeah. Journeys Radio. So S-O-U-L. J O U R N E Y S radio and uh yeah same as the website soldiernewsradio.com well, I think your videos are great. The lighting is good. It's not always good in all videos. The production is uh -huh. good. The background's good. So keep doing what you're, you're, you're doing. I think that you're going to continue to inspire a lot of other people uh, to do likewise. And in fact, there's a um, a young lady from um, a few states over that was talking to me. Not too long ago on Facebook about wanting to start her own radio show, you know, and, oh, and all I can do is encourage her to do it because there are a lot of people out there that would appreciate an additional uh, perspective, especially if she's as opinionated as she says she is, you know, people <laughs> like opinions and they like them from younger people. And, and definitely that would be that would be excellent to see. Now, with oh, that, we have a, a phone call from the 503 area code. I believe that's a call from Portland. Welcome. Hi, Alex. Hi, Christy. My name is Karen, and I am enjoying your show this evening. How are you? Hi, Karen. Great. How are We're you? Great. Good, good. I'm a little bit nervous. Anyways... We've been, my sister and I have been sitting here listening, and we enjoy all the new knowledge that we're getting. And, Christy, I listen to a lot of your archive shows at work. I do data entry at times, and so I can just kind of plug in. And I have, um, I've just learned so much. I'm kind of opening up to 
to a lot of new things. I think I'm at a point right now where I'm just getting a little overwhelmed. So I think sometimes we take two steps back before we take a step forward. But what I wanted to ask you was, of all the people that you've had on your show, who would you say is your favorite and why? I mean, was this, are you, there's so much for me, when I'm listening, there's so much information that comes in. Is there any particular person that's just moved you and to help you shift your thinking? Um, that's kind of what I'm asking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'll put it to you this way. I've had one guest on the show every single week for over three and a half years, um, and that's for a reason. His name is Tobias Lars, and um, he's on Thursday nights. And, I mean, I love all my guests. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I love Shakti. I love, they're all just Heather. I mean, they're such beautiful people with so much to offer. But I do have to say, Tobias has taught me personally the most. Um, he has helped me in such, you know, subtle yet tremendous ways, uh, my perspective on life. He's really, I think he's, he's like the number one guy or gal or human who has really helped me to feel safe being who I am. And, um, yeah, I just, I'll say that Tobias Lars, he is just incredibly gifted and talented and we are so blessed to have him there with us every week, but his show, they never get old. I mean, I can listen to an archive three and a half years ago and it's still totally relevant today has been the most crucial, I think, in, in my healing process. Uh-oh. Did we get cut? Karen? And well, I, I hear Karen... the birdies, so we didn't get cut. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm still here. Well, Karen, thank you for your call. Um, if you want to ask another question, you can call back in. It seems like we may have uh, uh, lost you, but uh, we are still on the air, and uh, we've also got time for several more phone calls. Um I'll check one more time. Karen, are you there? Okay, so we may have lost her. Uh, the number to join is 218-339-8525. You know, Christy, here's another thing I know you have a lot to say about. Uh, you know, divine masculine, divine feminine. It, it, these terms I'm hearing a lot more, not just divine feminine, but divine masculine, protective force, you know, and, and these, these forces that are within each of us, whether we be men or women, um, and we need to exercise that. I definitely can feel the, the masculine and feminine in myself. When I look at your videos, I can see the, the masculine and feminine balanced energies. And I'm starting to recognize it when I come across balanced individuals. Because you articulate the path that that um, um, that that can, boy, uh, how do I articulate this? Some of the steps we can take to be in that balanced state of consciousness. Yeah. Well, I just, I want to say I love both genders, <laughs> masculine and feminine, and you're so right. We have both of that within us. Um, so, I mean... I guess for me, it, you know, again, getting over the programming, well, I'm a girl, I'm supposed to do girl things, that means I'm supposed to be home and be barefoot and pregnant and, you know, stay in the kitchen, in the garden, which, by the way, I love to do all of that. Um, so, you know, I'm definitely not railing, but we also have these perspectives where all men are supposed to be breadwinners and you're supposed to, you know, bring home the bacon and you're supposed to dump the trash and, you know, mow the lawn and all of those types of, of gender roles, I suppose. But I think we're, you know, as we incorporate both sides, it's becoming less and less polarized which is also a beautiful thing. I don't think that it needs to be pushed on anyone. Uh, like, Alex, come on, wake up to your divine feminine now. I'm going to beat it into you. and <laughs> Or, you know, vice versa, because um, that certainly doesn't work. But um, I think we're in a time where we're safer to be that way without being ridiculed or being called names. Or, you know, there's a lot of people that have, stood before us and i have to say the uh homosexual transgender community is really leading the front lines in getting people to accept both aspects into our being um and i know there's probably somebody saying oh no what you can't say that that's that's communist or you know it's this agenda or whatever but <laughs> i don't think communist. it is <laughs> <laughs> well 
I have a, a couple friends that are transgender, and uh, they were men, or they were born men, and they just, they never fit in. They never, they always felt like they were born the wrong sex. And it wasn't until much later in life, like their 50s, where they were able to finally feel okay to dress the way they wanted to dress and, you know, paint their nails or let their hair grow and things like that. And I just think that is an incredibly bold and courageous move in today's society. I'm not saying it's for everyone. And sometimes, you know, I still do a double take. It's like, Wait, wait, Joe or Lynn? What's, you know, what's your name today? But really, does any of that even matter? Can you imagine a world without names? Because names are really just labels, and so are genders. And, you know, in regards to the whole, you know, I know the homosexual marriage and all of this stuff, I just don't understand why people care about what other people are doing in their bedrooms. Why? How is it hurting you? I mean, leave them alone. Let them do, you know, whatever they want. Let men wear dresses. Let girls wear pants. Oh, wait. We already do that, haven't we? So the feminine has kind of been trying to fit into this masculine world, um, not by being themselves and sharing the gifts that they have, but to, uh, you know, try to emascul- or masculinate themselves which, you know, doesn't really work. I did that myself. I used to wear suits every day and, you know, the red suit and try to be that powerful person and fit in because I was afraid of my femininity. I thought that it was all, you know, cool and emotional and dramatic and nagging and all the all the cliches, the typical things that we hear, you know, with men are bashing women or women bashing men, et cetera. So um, I don't know. I just really, a few years ago, if you would have asked me this, I would have been like, what? You know, they're not on the front lines. That just, you know, maybe 15 years ago, I probably would have said it was perverted. I look at it with new eyes now, and I appreciate how some of them are bridging the gap and finally, you know, being free or feeling free and safe to come out with their sexuality. I mean, really, Technically, sexuality, masculinity, femininity, yin yang, that's, they're the polar, it's part of the duality game. I totally agree with what you're saying, but being a straight man from a very gay city, um, um, <laughs> I will say that from my perspective, uh, for those that want freedom, uh, for some of them, they need to not be resentful towards those that are straight because yeah. being from that type of city I have felt a lot of reverse discrimination and yeah. unwanted attention and unwanted sexual comments yeah. and if it's not appropriate for a man to say certain things to a woman I don't think it's appropriate for him to say certain things to a man and I do think we live in a society where the, the standards aren't exactly in, and and because certain groups are seeking equality it almost seems like they're allowed to do things that heterosexuals are not uh, mm-hmm. Such as pedophilia. Pedophilia within the homosexual community, to me, it seems more socially acceptable than yeah. heterosexual pedophilia. Both are wrong. But, mm-hmm. you know, like the neighbor that I have here, it, he has a lot of experience with young boys. And a lot of, because people don't want to offend him, it's become acceptable. So I totally agree yeah. with you. No, and I totally, yeah, I agree with what you're saying, too, and I've totally seen that. It's just like, you know, I'm mostly vegan, but I definitely rail against the vegan cult. There's definitely a homosexual cult. There's definitely a heterosexual cult, you know. So I I totally understand what you're saying, and there, there definitely is a lot of that. And I also see... Like within educational institutions where a lot of it is being pushed, um, which, you know, I really don't think anything should be pushed on anyone. I think, you know, it's nice to be aware, but um, yeah, the reverse discrimination and it's really there's no such thing as reverse discrimination. It's discrimination. Of right, course, exactly. you being a heterosexual male, you're not allowed to be di- discriminated. So the media tells us it's reverse discrimination. But no, exactly. it's, it's discrimination. So, um, yeah, it would be really nice to just get oh, what it is. Again, it boils down to fear, doesn't it? And it boils down to self-hate. Because if we loved ourselves, there's no way we can hate another. They're just little aspects of us anyways. Yeah, that doesn't mean you're going to like 
what other people do. You can definitely love them from afar. I'm not talking nicey, nicey, mamby, pamby, no boundaries, you know, walk all over me. I'm going to invite you over to dinner and let you, you know, kick my butt again. No, that's not what I'm talking. You can, I mean, I love plenty of people from afar. And all that really means is just allowing them to exist just the way we want. You know, we want the right to exist in our fullness, being all aspects of ourselves, I think we have to allow that for others. And the more that we break down our judgments, our veils, our walls, that that just kind of happens naturally around us. I noticed, you know, when I lost a lot of my judgments, there were less people around judging me. Um, I don't know. It's it's this kind of spiritual physics. It kind of works that way. But I'm not saying that... You know, the only reason you get judged is because obviously you're judgmental. And, you know, I'm definitely not pointing fingers or, you know, trying to paint it with a broad brush. But I have seen as I've been able to, you know, embrace other things that, you know, 20 years ago would have I would have thought were completely abhorrent. Uh, my life has just changed so much, and I've been able to recognize the beauty and the pieces of myself, not only in the people I love, very much, but the people that I would prefer to love from afar because, you know, I don't really like you. <laughs> so. I just want to say for those that are listening, um, we are looking for a webmaster. And I like to help Christy with this project because I like to see it take off. And I like to see something like it implemented here in the area that I'm in. Um, you do it. A, a website. Start your chapter. And, and you're going to have someone contacting you tomorrow, and that person's listening now, and others that may want to help out can contact to help create a website so we can start sharing our skills and our abilities and, and something that maybe we can make like Craigslist. Um, I, I mentioned collective manifestation, visualization um, at the beginning of the program, and Bob, who helped me get to uh, Chicago, uh, we were talking about him earlier. He's been listening, and he told me that, uh, he says, Alex, as you know, the Bilderbergers are meeting in England this weekend. Some groups we would not typically work with are calling for a worldwide day of prayer against the global elites tomorrow. So I want people to look at this, look into this, Google this stuff uh, tonight on the Internet, uh, see what type of literature is out there on some of the websites. But you may want to, uh, to add your mind to this as you visualize like the uh the hero did in the movie dark city christy did you see dark city i have not i'm sorry <laughs> well, it's an excellent movie and it's an excellent metaphor for the the human resistance against the machines uh okay. in kind of a matrix kind of a fashion and i'm writing it down books, right now dark it's on city. YouTube for free yeah okay. and he uses the power of his mind to take down the arconic machines uh the, so it's a true story <laughs> well it's like a fairy tale. It's like mythology. But yeah, it is like a true story. It's a true story. Um, and so we'll talk more about that later because, uh, you know, the whole topic of collective manifestation does have power. And so it looks like uh, with a bunch of minds together, perhaps the millions, uh, we'll see what, what good can be done. And with that, we'll be back. Last segment up after this, 218 339 8525 for any last minute thoughts or intellectual, spiritual contributions to the broadcast. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilant Brown Seaweed Extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilant. There's nothing else like Modifilant. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifilan banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. 
Welcome to the world's meeting place. American. It's practically narcotic. Freedom. Oh, yes. I like very much. Radio. You're an American institution. American Freedom Radio. And welcome back to Outside the Box Radio, which is basically in its ninth year. Started the show in 2004 wow. on Access Television. And left that in 2011 and did some traveling and brought the online show back in late 2012. So I'm, I'm glad to have Christy on. I want to have more powerful female speakers on the program. For those listening, please email me some of the speakers that you enjoy that you think would have um, a positive contribution to a show like this and a network like this. Um, also, the people that run this network are always looking for new talent to join the network. So if you're thinking about starting a radio show, if you have something to say, believe me, there are people that are interested in hearing what you have to say. People that come to websites like this. Finally, I'm, I'm trying to get my own plot of land and I'm trying to raise some funds, some donations, some contributions, some investments in the future of Outside the Box TV. So for those listening, I haven't talked a lot about it, but I have a goal to bring back a, a produced version of my TV show, and I want to do it right out here in the desert, and I want to syndicate it on Access TV uh, on stations that still exist, thank God they do, that mm -hmm. still exist all throughout the station. Because, Christy, you know this, on Access TV, we can reach people that never get on the Internet. Yeah. And that's what's very special about bringing truth and knowledge uh, to that medium. So um, I don't plug this very much for those that do want to donate or help. Um, I can probably build a shack for less than $1,000, but I'll be on my own acre, and I won't have to deal with any stalkers anymore. <laughs> hey, uh, stalkers be gone. <laughs> It's been a, what do you feel is the best way to deal with negative energy, Christy? We talked a little bit about it during the break when people uh, sometimes attack the light because it blinds them. What yeah. do you think is the best way to resolve that type of situation? Well, okay, sometimes they, uh, you know, just what you said, uh, that they attack the light uh, because it blinds them. Some of those situations are... You know, it's people that were just like us, you know, kind of waking up or maybe not entirely. They were programmed and they, they really just, you know, maybe it was the first time they ever heard that there's a hundred cures for cancer, for example. So, you know, I do believe that some of the people that attack, uh, you know, us might actually have questions and might really want to learn more. So before you just, you know, get, oh, well, you're a psychopath, you're a stalker, you're whatever, and dismiss them, you know, kind of feel, decipher, is this somebody reaching out because maybe I triggered them or something in them and they're here, you know, really wanting to learn? Other times, however, <laughs> I mean, and I'm just talking about the two extremes, the other extreme on the other end would be people that I believe get paid to harass people, whether it's online or in person, they get paid to slander people, they get paid to literally be on the internet all day stalking people, slandering people, blogging, commenting, etc. Um, but I think as we come into ourselves more, we can feel that energy first. Now, is this somebody with an open heart who really is just, you know, crying out for help? Or is this somebody that, you know, just leave them be, ignore them, walk away, and just, you know, kind of pretend they don't exist? So, and I'm sure there's variations in between all of those. So the ones that are just doing it either, you know, maybe they have an ego issue and they believe that they can make themselves look bigger or badder or whatever, more intelligent by putting you down, you know, putting us down, then, you know, I, don't waste your time with them, really, because it takes two to tango and they feed off of that energy. So don't 
we don't have to share our energy with anyone we don't want to. But, you know, again, I have seen some really, really sincere people that initially they'll, you know, come attack the show. Like, how dare you say that? Uh, like one time uh, Tobias said, uh, Jesus is Hitler. And like we went right to break. <laughs> Like right after he said that. So no explanation, no anything. And man, we got attacked. People were mad. Some people left the show and, you know, never, <laughs> well, I'm never listening to you again. But then there were a few that actually listened or that came back to listen to see what he had to say. And it's like, wow. I never thought of it that way, and I am so sorry for attacking you like that. I didn't mean it. I was just angry. I was having a bad day. You know, I've had people, like, make fun of my laugh a lot. You know, they'll, they'll go on YouTube and, how dare her laugh like that all the time? It must sound, or it, she must be ingenuine, or that has to be fake, or, you know, and I can feel the difference. Is, is it somebody doing it because that's what they do to serve their ego, or is it somebody maybe that's having a bad day? And I've actually put this to the test a few times. I just kind of felt, oh, this person just doesn't seem very happy. And maybe that's why they believe other people can't be genuinely happy, right? So I would say something like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I wish I could give you a big hug right now. And then everything turned around, and now they listen to the show and watch the videos and, you know, provide a lot of input. So, I mean, just because people are jerks, I mean, come on, we're all jerks at some point in our life, uh, maybe multiple points in our lives. Um, we are human. We make mistakes. So, I don't know. I like to just kind of address it with an open heart each individual circumstance but the ones that you know you're not going to change anyone if it turns into this ego battle well i'm right no well i'm right well i'm writer no i'm writer <laughs> then i'm the rightest you know that's just I personally don't have time for that, but I do know it's really easy to kind of get caught up in that, you know, triggering each other and the tit for tat. And, hey, if you want to do it because it's fun one night, go for it. But, you know, just be mindful of, of where you're putting your energy. Are you doing it because, you know, are you choosing to engage with, you know, I guess what you would call an Internet troll because you're having fun and maybe even getting – Letting off some steam yourself? Cool, go for it. It's probably healthy. But I don't feel that you need to respond to That's all true. of them or any of them. It's a very <laughs> important point that sometimes people enter our lives because of unresolved karma, or if we don't want to get that metaphysical, there are teachers to remind us in this circumstance, remind myself to have patience with those that are on a different, we'll just say different, we don't mm -hmm. have to say lower, we don't have to say higher, but a different level of consciousness and understanding yeah now now on that point i really appreciate hearing on one of your radio shows and and perhaps i'll listen to one tonight going to sleep because uh, i'm going to get caught up on some of your stuff especially your interviews with toby and lars but you know tobias, a lot of yeah very good person what, what, what's his website by the way tobias uh his website is soulcounseling.com or you can go to course of awakening.com he um he does little seminars super cheap super affordable you can even do it online with him on skype for 10 bucks i mean he's definitely not like one of those hey 1500 dollars for the day and i'm going to give you the secrets to the universe he is a regular person just happens to be Super gifted and extremely insightful. So, anyways, uh, Course of Awakening. Um, he does other things as well. But, um, uh, yeah, Tobias Lars, he's Thursday night. Uh, and I heard on one of your shows, you know, you're talking about this, this new age um, mentality. Uh, not, not to attack people that may identify with new age, but an aspect of new age thought that, that can be very judgmental. Ooh, I'm so enlightened. I'm so ascended. And I have railed and ranted and experienced in ways that I, that I will not share on the radio that have hit more close to home than what most people think. Mm -hmm. And I've had to also forgive them. Christy, yeah. for the resentment, anger, for that attitude that we sometimes get from people that don't want to look at the reality that sometimes there really is rape in the world. Sometimes yeah. there really is, you know, dark bathers running around convincing men and women to worship them to kill others that are brown. Yeah. 
you know, around yeah. the world. We have Darth Vader's still running around, but but I'm trying to accept where they're at. Some people are at a different level of being able to face the truth as it is, which ultimately is a Buddhist concept to see truth as it is. And with that, I'm going to give you the last two minutes because I think we're almost out of time. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, Alex, I just want to thank you. It's been really fun being here with you tonight and congratulate you for nine years uh, doing the Access TV, your videos and your shows. And I'm really glad that you're here at American Freedom Radio. Um, so, yeah, thank you for having me. I love what you're doing. And by the way, um, you know, you said uh, in reference to Project Love Your Neighbor, you wish somebody out there would start it. And I'm just, hey, Alex, why don't you? You can be the chapter leader for, or whatever. Like I said, there's no leader, there's no master, there's no ruler, there's no, you know, you have to belong to a club or fill out an application or anything. But um, you can organize, you know, a Colorado uh, chapter of it. And I mean, you're, not gonna me right. you're not going to sue me if I just take You're not going to sue me if I take your idea? I love it. Okay. Well, okay. that's the good thing about being an anarchist. You can pretty much do anything to me and I won't sue you. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but well, like excellent. I said, it's not it's not about me. It's just an idea and I just want to plant seeds to help people you know be part of the solution now. I would love for everybody to be happy and healthy and living in the moment and doing what serves them, what serves their heart and I just think that planting these seeds can help us get a little bit closer to that. So <laughs> Well, tell us in the last minute or so um, what people might find on your website and how they can support you. Oh, sure. Okay, mytrueessence.net is uh, my holistic health coaching. There's some blogs and videos about natural healing. I make natural, organic, handmade, to-order skin care and beauty product, products, things that have cured people of gangrene, uh, heart disease, cancer, AIDS, uh, let's see, scabies, um, Candida, all sorts of poison ivy, burns, etc. Uh, so I, I definitely dabble in a lot of metaphysics and natural health and a solution-based response to uh, what we're dealing with today. So mytrueessence.net is that site. And then souljourneysradio.com is where you can find me here sharing the air with Alex. And thank you to the person that, that has offered to help jumpstart this website. It's time. To get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilan, brown seaweed extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilan. There's nothing else like Modifilan. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifilan banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. You're listening to the future of talk. American Freedom Radio. This is American Freedom Radio.